Welcome everyone. In today's lecture, we are going to start taking a look at a very important skill that you as a programmer will slowly develop. And that skill is to take a complex task and break it into simpler tasks. We will begin this process starting with this very important concept of variables and assignments. Here is a complex expression and as we can see in the REPL we have typed it out and pressed enter and we have got an answer. We have seen that the REPL can evaluate complex expressions like this involving multiple operators using the order of precedence of these different operators. Now, how would you do this kind of a calculation on a simple calculator like this? Well, let's ask our friend. Our friend suggests that on the calculator, you should perform these operations. Our friend will make use of the simple calculator's memory button. They will save some answer to memory and then they will recall that answer from memory using the MR or memory recall button. So let's follow our friend's steps and see if we get the same answer 0 0.6. So our friend says we should do 19 plus 31 and then do an equal to, so we press that, so that produces the answer 50 and then save this answer to memory by clicking the memory add or M plus button. Now our friend suggests doing 11 plus 19, which is the numerator. 11 plus 19 equals, and that's 30. Now our friend suggests that we press divide and then the memory recall button and then equal to. So we do divide and then memory recall and then equal to and we get the correct answer. So how did our friend decompose this complex problem? It was complex to do on the calculator. How were they able to decompose this for the purposes of the calculator? Well, they knew they could start by first calculating the denominator and saving it to memory using the M plus button. So conceptually, in their mind, there is some space in the calculator labeled M uh, where they have saved this answer 19 plus 31, which was 50. Then they calculated this answer, and remember this answer was displayed on the calculator. So in some sense, conceptually, there is some space in the calculator's memory for displaying the current value. Uh, let's call that value D, and that's where they calculated the numerator 11 plus 19. And finally, by doing this step, they divided D by M to produce the correct answer. Now, if you're familiar with a calculator, you would, be, you would know how to do these kinds of complex calculations. In Python, you can do something similar. Although, of course, in the REPL, you can calculate this complex expression directly, I'm going to show you how you could break this complex expression down into simpler steps. Again, we don't have to do this for this problem, but as we look at more complex problems, you will find the ability to break that complex problem into a simple sequence of steps useful. So let's try and simulate these same operations, but using Python syntax. So in the REPL, you would type something like this. You would say m equals 19 plus 31, which simulates this calculation. Then you would say d equals 11 plus 19, which simulates calculating the value that was displayed. And then you would take the ratio d divided by m, and that expression would evaluate to 0.6. So these two statements are called assignment statements and we will spend most of today's lecture understanding this key idea of assignment statements. This expression down here is an expression that doesn't use 
raw values as we have seen in this expression. Instead, some of these are variables which we have initialized in these assignment statements. We have given a value to m, namely 19 plus 31. We have given a value to d, namely 11 plus 19. And here we are calculating an expression that uses the values of those saved variables. Very similar to the way the calculator uh, used those saved values that were displayed or were recalled from memory. So I'm using this calculator analogy just to help you see some similarities between what we are about to see with assignment statements and what you are already familiar with using a calculator. Now this expression, this calculation uses these values m and d and I've used similar names to what you have seen in a calculator. But there's no reason to call these m and d. You can give them more meaningful names. In this case, since we are calculating this ratio, why don't we use a more meaningful name like numerator for the top of the ratio and denominator for the lower part and then we will calculate the expression numerator divided by denominator. That's much more readable than d divided by m where we would have to remember that d is actually the numerator. So in general when we create variables and we give them values we should choose useful names that make it easier for someone to see the steps that we have performed. So what we have just seen is a simple example of taking a complex problem. Of course, in this case, the problem isn't really very complex. But the point is we have decomposed that complex calculation into a series of simpler subtasks, simpler calculations. And in fact, what we are doing over here is mimicking what is actually going on inside uh, the Python interpreter when it evaluates something as complicated as this. It actually does perform something similar to this. Fortunately, as Python programmers, we don't always have to write our complex uh, expressions in this low level form. We can leave them in this high level form and they will evaluate very easily. But I wanted to give you this as an example of how you could take something non-trivial and break it into smaller parts. And we will do the same when we really do complex tasks. Now this sequence of operations is in fact what we call a Python program. And as we will see, it's not just a simple sequence of instructions one after another. It could be more complicated than this. But what you could do now is take these statements and move them out of the REPL, copy paste them into a, a text file. If you name that file with a .py extension, you can actually run that Python program and it would do these steps. Now admittedly, this Python program is not very interesting, but it's our first Python program. It's a sequence of steps and it ends up evaluating this complex expression.